Coming up this week on the center of it all. A walk through history by candlelight. We'll tell you where and why. And find out why the Center Furnace Mansion is busy with the hustle and bustle of holiday cheer. Some handmade Christmas decorations and Mel is making breakfast. Don't go anywhere, it's all right here on the center of it all. Welcome to December and the center of it all. Christmas is in the air all over Center County and at the Center Furnace Mansion, they are in full swing for their biggest fundraiser of the year. Out with the antiques and in with the decorations. The Center Furnace Mansion is being transformed into a Christmas castle for the upcoming Stocking Stuffer fundraiser. This is the 14th year for the fundraiser and coordinators say each year gets stronger and better than the last. Well, after 14 years, the Stocking Stuffer has really um, become a, a community tradition of sorts. A lot of people come here and say that it kicks off their holiday season. And I think that it's lovely to be able to go out and, and kick off your holiday season, buy a few gifts for yourself or your family or your friends, and, and, um, and know that, that some of that money is going toward a good cause. The cause? The money raised is for the preservation programming efforts of the Center County Historical Society. With over 50 vendors to choose from, items go from mittens made out of recycled sweaters, to handmade glass ornaments, to Christmas tree ornaments. But it doesn't all happen overnight. Preparations start as early as the summer looking for the best quality craftspeople and antique dealers in the area. And they work all through the fall. And the setup? It takes two days just to get all the different vendors in place. Even laying all of this space out, we have maps for every floor and every room where people are going and that has to be adjusted every year based on new vendors that are coming in. And um, so it, it's a monumental effort. And the decorating takes even longer. This year's theme is Victorian top hats and they are on display throughout the mansion but can also be purchased to use as your own at home decor. Along with the Stocking Stuffer fundraiser is a preview party the night before for people to come and enjoy food, music, and get a sneak peek of all the items available. And some say it's a party to look forward to. My favorite part is the preview party night because it is after dark and all of the floors have set up, just set up, so the whole place just smells of fresh greens and oranges and all of the vendors are set up in the mansion at night just walking up to the mansion for the preview party. It's all lit and the lights coming out of the windows. It's beautiful. It's just, it's really a gorgeous, because it's Victorian, which to me kind of speaks Christmas anyway. And after over 1,200 hours of volunteer work, Victorian Christmas fills every corner of the mansion. And for Sorensen, that's a sight to see. My favorite part is coming in on Friday morning and seeing everything set up and, and and launching. But it's more than just bringing Christmas cheer to the people of Center County. It's a way to mix history with the joy of the holidays. That um, if people haven't been to the Center Furnace Mansion, that they'll have an idea of what it is and, and maybe think, hmm, I'd like to come back. If you would like to volunteer for any upcoming events, visit centerhistory.org. When we come back, we take a trip out to Bowlesburg. Welcome back to the center of it all. Columbus Chapel and Bowl Mansion Museum is filled with history as far back as King Tut. This year, they're sharing that history with a little help from some wreaths, bows, and a few live Christmas trees. These trees may not be decorated now, but soon they will all glimmer shine and glow like this one. This year, 
there, for the first time, the Columbus Chapel and Bull Mansion will be decorated for Christmas and open to the public for candlelight tours. The tours will last around an hour and a half and take you all over the first floor of the mansion, teaching the history of the family and the artifacts found in the home and to keep tradition alive. Hometown Christmas has been a great ongoing celebration for years, and so we're trying to augment and assist as we can with the museum to make this a, a total Bullsburg experience. An experience that some people travel from as far as Brazil and Argentina to see. Volunteers began decorating the museum about a week ago for the upcoming holidays. Garland and pine cones can be seen on each fireplace mantle. Christmas lights and bows decorate the staircase. Five live Christmas trees, one in each room, completes the look. Each tree will be decorated by a local business. Part of what we're trying to do is connect the museum with the community. What was so exciting is that how the community has responded to these special events. And the hope is that the candlelight tour this year will be a stepping stone for what's in store for the future. This was the year to lay the groundwork for these various special events. Next year, we're looking to plan an even more exciting Christmas time event. An event with things like a mile and a half light show around the property and a Kris Kringle market complete with shops and toasty hot chocolate and a tour of the second floor of the mansion. And it's all to bring the history of this town and this home to life for the community. Realizing that here in Little Bowlesburg, Pennsylvania, that we have such a breadth of history. And that's one of the things I think that surprises, especially local people, because our guests come from all over the world. A lot of locals still don't quite grasp all that's here. So I think that's perhaps the uh, most important things for us and for them to come back. Planning and preparations began months ago and plans for next year are already being put together. Never enough time for planning. And they hope that this event draws people to the mansion and gets them to keep coming back. Really shows people whether you're an enthusiast of the military, to the enthusiast of Americana, of the Renaissance art. We really represent such a huge segment of history. Several dozen volunteers work together to get the mansion decorated for the holidays. Wreaths hang decoratively from the doors and are handmade by the volunteers. So by the end, when the mansion is complete with Christmas trees, lights, bows, and candlelight, all the history of the community that is in this house can shine through to the future. This really is a way of promoting not only the historical aspects of it, but showcasing what an incredible village Bullsburg is. It, it's the quintessential American village, and that's what we're trying to show people. By knowing our history, we can better understand where we're going. When we come back, Mel shows us a delicious way to start your day. Welcome back to the center of it all. Christmas is coming, and for some, that means a lot of people. If you're hosting friends, family, anyone this holiday season and aren't sure what to feed them in the morning, well, Mel's got you covered. I cook breakfast almost every day. Perking some coffee, toasting some bread, scrambling some eggs. It isn't hard to do if you're cooking for two. But if you've got a big family or overnight guests, easy can turn into chaos really fast. Today, I'm taking all the stress out of making breakfast for a crowd. I'm going to show you how to bake eggs and make a sausage, egg, and cheese casserole that feeds 12 people. Preheat your ovens and let's get started. I've chopped up a 12-ounce package of English muffins into one-half to three-quarter inch bread cubes. And I'm going to drizzle it slowly, sorry about that, with one stick of melted butter. And we're going to top this with four cups or eight ounces of cheddar cheese and I like to use finely cheddar, finely grated cheddar if you can find it in your grocery store. And next it's going to get topped with a pound and a half of pre-cooked sausage. You can use 
a loose sausage that's chopped up with the side of a spoon, but I like to use these three ounce sausage patties so that when the casserole is sliced and portioned, everybody gets an entire sausage patty in their piece. And once again, more cheese, another four cups or eight ounces. I've whisked one dozen of large eggs together, and I'm going to stir in two cups of whole milk, a half teaspoon of black pepper, ground nutmeg, and salt. Whisk it all together. This will only take about 10 seconds. And last, I'm going to slowly drizzle this mixture evenly over the top of the entire casserole. And I mean slowly so that you give the liquid all the time it needs to drizzle down to the bottom and into the nooks and crannies of those English muffins. Almost finished. And at this point, you can bake the casserole in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes, or you can cover it with plastic wrap and set it aside for an hour or two before you bake it, or put it in the refrigerator overnight before you bake it. You've seen me roast bacon in the oven more times than you can probably even count in a disposable aluminum pan at 375 degrees in the oven, for 20 to 25 minutes, you get some really crisp bacon. What you're going to need for bacon in egg cups is partially cooked bacon. And that means you're just gonna take it out of the oven a little sooner. About 15 minutes in the oven is all, all it's gonna take to make your bacon really pliable and bendable. And all I'm going to do is line the perimeter of each muffin cup with one strip of partially cooked bacon. Wipe my hands a little bit. And into each cup, I'm gonna crack one egg. And I recommend cracking the egg carefully into a one cup measuring container and slowly adding it to the center. That really prevents your yolks from breaking open. I'm just making six of these today. And I'm using jumbo eggs for this. You can use smaller sized eggs, but I've experimented with this recipe. And jumbo eggs fill the standard size muffin tins almost to the brim and they cook up perfectly every time. I'm going to do is give them a quick grind of sea salt, peppercorn blend, put them in a 375 degree oven for about 10 minutes and we're going to have perfectly cooked bacon and egg cups.
for 12 people with no stress, no chaos, almost no cleanup. I'll drink to that. For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website. Something that quick, easy, delicious, and feeds so many people is definitely something worth trying this holiday season. When we come back, we start to decorate for Christmas and meet our pet of the show. Welcome back to the center of it all. Thanksgiving is over, so now it's time to talk Christmas. Today for our craft, we're gonna do these simple, quick and easy mason jar. They can be decorations, you can give them as gifts, you can fill them with candy, um, but they're really simple, so let's get started. Everything that I needed I got from the craft store. You just need some hemp for the top, some jingle bells, a paintbrush, some chalky finish spray paint. I got the spray paint because it dries faster than just using regular paint and putting it on with a paintbrush yourself and you can put it on a lot thinner. I also went and got some holiday stamps. So you're just gonna take the lid off of the mason jar again. We're not gonna use it for this craft. And so I just went and got these little stamps. They're just holiday stamps, there's a variety of them. So we got joy, there's a Christmas tree, um, very Christmas fuel. So there's a present. I'm just gonna pull out a couple. So I'm gonna head outside and spray paint it and then we're gonna give it a couple minutes to dry and then we're gonna start stamping. our mason jar spray painted. I let it dry about five to ten minutes. I'm just gonna take, this is just simple acrylic paint. I got it in white. You can get it in green, red, uh, any kind of holiday color. And I'm gonna use this to put onto the stamp to then put onto the mason jar. So I'm just gonna add a little bit to this paper towel. I like to start on the back till I get used to stamping instead of the front. I'm going to do a snowman stamp. I'm just gonna dip my paintbrush in the paint and then just paint it over top. And then I'm just gonna lightly damp the top to get the extra off. And then I'm just going to go around. Okay, so after you do the stamp, now we're going to add just kind of the top so I just went and got some hemp I got the really um, thin kind because you have to thread it through the top of the jingle bell and there's not a whole lot of space so I'm probably gonna do about an, an arm's length I'm gonna get my jingle bells I have red green and gold um, I think I'm going to do green and gold for this one. Okay, so now you're just going to thread it through the top of the jingle bell. Okay, now I'm going to kind of put these in the middle. Figure out which side you want to be the front. I like to make that first strand hang down just a little bit, so make it a little bit looser. Okay, and then I'm just gonna tie it into a bow. And I'm going to cut 
cut off the extra end. And that's it. So you can see it's really simple, really easy. Probably takes like 10 minutes tops. You can use them just like this as a decoration. You can put a candle in them and make them another mason jar candle. You can fill them with candy. Um, that's what my mom said she's going to do with these ones. So there's just kind of quick and easy way that you can add a little personal touch to your house this Christmas. Let's leave these on the table and head over to Nittany Beagle Rescue to see who they have for a pet of the show. Thanks, Alicia. I'm here from Nittany Beagle Rescue with Leah. She's one of the new pups we've got. She's about a year old. She's a tricolor beagle mix of some sort. We're not exactly sure what she's mixed with, but it's got a lot of energy because she is a very perky pup. She's only one, so she's definitely going to calm down as she gets older, but she does need a good um, energetic family too, so maybe kids or someone willing to run with her or take her for a lot of walks or hikes. She's good with kids, she's good with people, she's good with other dogs. We had her at uh, Petco this past weekend and she did a, a good job there. It was very sweet. She's a little skittish at first, but once she um, warms up to you, she's very sweet. And she's good in the car, she's just a little bit energetic, so if you could take her for a long walk or something before putting her in the car, it would make your life a lot easier. She's responsive to food, so I think she'd be easy to, to train. And she's responsive to affection too. That brings this week's Center of It All to a close. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>